nothing to give. There was no way I could pay my debt. Now, what Jesus does is that he transfers from his account to my account. He transfers from his account to my account. And when he, uh, uh, just this week, my wife had to transfer some money from me. I, 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 I went to the ATM, it, it, um, insufficient funds. Try to get money out the uh, ATM. I couldn't get the amount of money that I needed to get out the, uh, out the ATM. So I called my wife. I said, listen, um, um, I need to get such and such. Uh, uh, so she said, okay. And so she trans transfers money from one account to the other account. Then she sent me a text saying, okay, now you can go get the money. Very simple, from one account to another account. The account that I was trying to get to, not enough money. So she had another account that had money transferred from that account to this account. When we have our account, the account is empty. You can't, that's nothing you have in that account. When you come to Christ, he transfers from his account to your account. Now you have access to that account. You can go and withdraw from that account now. You can withdraw. You need peace? Peace is in that account. You need joy? It's in that account. You need bills paid? It's in that account. Righteousness is in that account. Everything you need has been transferred into that account. You didn't have to earn that. You didn't have to earn that. Jesus earned it. Jesus did the work. I didn't transfer the money. She transferred the money. All I had to do was listen to what she said and go withdraw the money. She put the money in the account. I went and withdraw the money. Jesus put the money in the account. Now it's your time to go and withdraw. He put righteousness in the account. He put healing in the account. He put joy in the account. He put peace in the account. Now you by faith withdraw what you need. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's in the account. Yes. It's in there. Yes. If you need it, it's in there. Yes. Anything you need, if you have a need, it's in the account. Yes. It's in your account. If you have a need, it's in your account. It's already been transferred in your account. It's already there. It's already there. I need healing. It's already there. I need peace. It's already there. My children need to be saved. It's already there. Salvation for your whole family is in that account. The Bible says if you believe on Christ, he said you and your whole house shall be saved. Every, everybody in your house saved is in that account. Salvation for everybody in your house is in that account. Amen. It's in that account. You need a miracle in your body, it's in that account. Whatever it is you need, it's in that account. We have to learn how to live not by sight, but by faith. You see me limping, but you got to understand something. I'm already healed. Amen. Amen. Because my uh, uh, existence is not based on my physical. My existence is based on what's been put in my account. Now, the devil may try to fight me, but he can't stop me from getting to the ATM. Amen. He can't stop me from putting my car into the ATM. Mm. He cannot stop me from making the right uh, uh, the withdrawal from my ATM. And the, the beautiful thing about it is that I got the right code. Yeah. And the code is Jesus. Yes. And so whatever I need, I have access to it. So that's not the issue. And so the enemy trying to make me believe that I'm not healed, make me believe that I can't do this, I can't do that. But the devil is a liar because the Bible says he has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. It's in my account. It's in my account. I don't, I don't have to worry about a need. I, I, you don't ever worry about a need. Because anything you need is going to be in the account. It's in the account. Amen. That's what you have to understand. I didn't earn it, but he gave it to me anyway. Why? Because he loved me. So when we take communion today, that's what we're doing. We're calling to remembrance the work of Christ. We're calling to remembrance that he has already done everything that needs to be done for court. 
healing, peace of mind, joy, victory. He has already done. He has defeated my enemy. Satan has been defeated by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. I have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. I'm not going to be delivered. I have already been delivered. I'm not going to be set free. I've already been set free. I'm not going to be a child of God. I'm already a child of God. I'm not going to be an heir. I'm already an heir. You have to understand that. You have to know that because if you don't know that, then you can't withdraw from the account. But when you know who you are in Christ, when you realize what Christ has done for you, then you are now able to make withdrawals from your heavenly account. Thank you, Lord. You're able to make withdrawals now because God has put you in a position that everything you need has been set up for you and all you do is make a withdrawal from that account. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping this thing up. Your account is full of everything you will ever need. I'm going to take you one more place and we finish. Go to 1 Peter 1 and 3. 1 Peter 1 and 3. First Peter 1 and 3. This is what the Bible says. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. You need to undermine those two scriptures. We need to undermine those two scriptures. <coughs> he says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With his abundant mercy has begotten, meaning you were born again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He begotten you to what? Verse number four tells you, to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. What does it mean to be reserved? When something is reserved, it means that it's set aside for you. You ever go somewhere and somebody has reserved the table for you? Yeah. That means that somebody, when they was putting that thing together, had you on their mind. Mm -hmm. And they went through whatever was necessary to prepare a place for you. So that when you got there, there will be a place for you to sit. You are not an afterthought. You are not a mistake. You are not just something that happened, but you were the plan of God. You were the thought out plan of God. Book of Jeremiah says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. That's what he told Jeremiah. You're not a mistake. You're not just here. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and to bless you. Plans to make your end good. So when we deal with God, you got to understand that God has reserved a place for me. Thank you. He has established something and can't nobody get there but court. You can't fit in my chair. That chair is made for me. Right. You got to sit in your own chair. You got a chair. You got to find your chair. But he says, I have reserved an inheritance. Set it aside and marked it for you. He said it is un it's incorruptible, meaning it can't break down, it won't degrade. It won't fade away, meaning it won't lose value. Fade away, something fades, it, lo it tarnishes, it loses its luster, loses its value, loses its color. He said it won't fade away. And he said it's incorruptible, it's incorruptible, incorruptible. And he says, can't nobody get to it. Your enemy can't get to it. Your enemy can't stop what's yours. He can't stop what's been reserved for you. He can't stop it from manifesting. So you don't have to worry about your enemies. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about a hater. You don't have to worry about no hater because a hater can't do nothing against you. He cannot stop what God has 
uh, 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 bless you. That's very important. And so that's what he said. He says, Corey, this is reserved. This is set aside. This is yours. And Christ has made this transfer into your account. And now whatever it is you need today, you need to make a withdrawal from that account. That's why we take communion. This is a good, I'm giving him my brokenness and I'm taking healing. I'm giving him my frustration and I'm taking peace. I'm giving him my pain and I'm taking healing. I'm give, whatever it is, I'm transferred. I'm giving him. He became poor that I may be rich. He became sick that I may be healed. He became sin that I may become righteous. It is a transfer. I am giving him my brokenness that he would give me his wholeness. And so that's what we take communion for. We, it's a transfer. I'm, every Thing that it is that's messed up and out of order, we're going to give that to him and we're going to take what we need from him because he has laid it up for us and it belongs to us. Put your hands together. Amen. Amen.